Call all hands. Speak to quarters. Run over the guns. Stand by this terrible battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. sincerest form of flattery. Well, Lieutenant Mound, who commanded the bomb catch Harvey attached to my Baltic squadron, <laughs> well, he'd grown to imitate me in, in every gesture and speech and... <laughs> well, but I, I had other things on my mind. Bonaparte's forces were laying siege to the Russian defenders outside the city of Riga. <laughs> imitation. Well, the art of war seems to be that of imitation. Well, it definitely was so in the belief of von Clausewitz, a Prussian colonel who had deserted Bonaparte in order to oppose him, and who was showing me the Russian earthworks and the lines. You will observe, Commodore Hornblower, from this vantage point, up here on the gallery of the church tower, we can see spread out before us the whole operation. Hmm? Maiden is attempting to move up his heavy guns. Hmm? The classic method, observe. Now, from the line of the river diagonally up to the pine woods, he has dug a trench. It is protected with breastworks, mm, huge baskets laid up filled with earth. The classic method, I see. Then from the pine woods, uh, another diagonal trench. Yes, and so on zigzag. Mm -hmm. Each getting closer to our lines until he has solid breastworks behind which to employ his heavy artillery. Yes, yes, but uh, how long before they're in range? Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Should judge two weeks. Two weeks? It has been done this way since the days of Caesar. Well, nobody will deny that Bonaparte wants to be another Caesar. But you know guns heavy enough to batter down those breastworks? It is most difficult. Oh, I've got mortars aboard my bomb catches. If we could, we, we could level them in no time. So? And why not do so, Commodore? I said if we could, but that river isn't deep enough. Sandbars, shallows, quicksands. No, no, we'd run aground before we got within range. I see. So we must carry on the fight ourselves. Is that it? Colonel von Clausewitz, there are some things that even the British Navy cannot do. Oh, I understood nothing was impossible to the British Navy. I apologize, Commodore. I was wrong. <laughs> I withheld the words that came rushing to my lips. Goodwill, even between allies, is sometimes a frail matter. Earlier, we'd been warm friends, but now that the French approaches were moving towards Riga, I was asking why the Russian guns couldn't stop the enemy, and they were asking why my ship's guns couldn't do the same. So I hurried back to Riga. And there, on the waterfront, I, I ran across Lieutenant Mound. <clears throat> it's dusty here, but my throat is as dry as a camel. Well, Mr. Mound, if you've completed your business, I... I have a moment before going back aboard the Nonsuch. Look, there's, a, there's an inn over there. Perhaps you'd join me in a glass of this odd beverage they, they call vodka. Hmm? Do you 
missing, Goodman. Was it? I said that oh, you were uh, Yes, sir. Yes, I do sometimes, sir. There's no reason to be ashamed of it. Oh, I'm not, sir. Sometimes in the morning, just before I open my eyes, I think of home. Mm -hmm. There's honeysuckle outside my place in Hampshire. It comes in the window, sweet and strong as, as perfume. You married, Mount? Yes, sir. Long? A little more than a year, sir. And children? We're expecting one, sir. Oh, you are, huh? Any day now. We're both hoping for a son, sir. I sent a letter to my wife. The cam carried it on her voyage back. I might be there by now. I wrote her that if it's a boy... I... Yes? I told her to name him Horatio. Oh, you did, eh? Well, if you've no objections, sir. Huh? Well, there's no reason to consult me, Mr. Mind. It's a common enough name. Here, listen. Listen to that. Gunfire. Hmm. Well, Mind, it seems we're not back in England uh, among the honeysuckle, hmm? back on board the nun such, I was both touched and irritated by Mount's hero worship. What glorified me in his eyes, I certainly couldn't imagine. Not while my ship stood idle in the midst of battle. Line of trenches here, with a battery here. Mm. Their main flank and stores are behind a dike here. Oh, water's close enough to spit on them. Oh, come look at the chart. Shoal water bush. Aye, too shallow for us. I mentioned that to Clausewitz. He was not impressed. Oh, land soldiers. Aye. Well, at least you understood it, and Mound understood. Mound, eh? Well, that's a good young officer. Yes, he is. He's a fine future, too. You know, I find I have quite an affection for young Mound. Lives in Hampshire, he says. Has a home there, a wife, uh, and a child on the way. Has he now? Oh, I never even knew he was married. No, nor did I. I never thought to inquire. Not before today. I, I had a drink with him today. Good officer. Yes. I'd only just come in from the breastworks. Dusty road from there to Riga, and my throat was as dry as a... <coughs> As a, as a camel. What's that, sir? As a camel. By heaven, Bush, why didn't I think of that before? What, sir? Oh, wool gathering, sentimental talk about home and all that nonsense. Bush, a man should keep his mind on his business, and our business is war. Where's the messenger? Messenger? Yes, sir? My compliments to the officer of the watch. Will he please make signal to the bomb catch Harvey for Mr. Mann to meet me on shore at once? Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Exactly, Colonel von Klausewitz. And uh, General Lesnoff, if Lieutenant Mound and I may have your ear also. With pleasure, Commodore. However, I believe it is a fool's errand on which you arrive here in such haste. Why? You say you will use camels. We have no camels. This is not the Sahara Desert. Yes, but... General Lesnoff, the Commodore is an expert on ships. Perhaps his camels are called ships of the desert. <laughs> He's an expert on them also. Colonel von Klausowitz, shall we get down to business? No, I make no offense. Well, I hope not. We're allies in this venture. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Exactly, General Lesnoff. While we talk, the Frenchmen move ever closer and closer. Well, in this instance, gentlemen, a camel is a naval term. Mr. Mound, uh, will you introduce these gentlemen to the meaning of the word camel? Yes, sir. A camel is a method of reducing the draft of a ship. Well, what kind of camel? As the Commodore has already pointed out, the water in the river is very shallow. Too shallow for our bomb catches to come within range of the enemy. Yes, yes, yes. I have been told it's over and over. Colonel, proceed, Mr. Mount. Sir, if two loaded vessels are lashed tightly, one on each side of the bomb catch, and are then emptied of their loads, it will lighten all three and raise them farther out of the water. Raise them farther out of the water? I do not yet comprehend. General, you, you have some barges in Riga, hmm? Yes. Barges draw no more than a couple of feet of water when empty. Uh -huh. We will load them with sand, then empty out the sand. The bomb catch could be lifted clean out of the water. I see. Da, da. And yet we get close enough to bring the guns to bear. Da. Exactly, General. We may commandeer two barges, big ones, preferably. At once, Commodore Commodore. Good, good. Oh, man, that's, there's only one problem. Yes, sir? Are you going to steer them all? Drawing less than two feet of water, they'll be almost unmanageable. That's true, sir. They'll drift at the mercy of the wind. Unless, Mr. Mann... By George, sir. A Danube rudder. What? Uh, General Lesnar, that's a, a very large auxiliary rudder set well behind the ships. Uh -huh. If it's big enough, it will compensate for the lack of bottom to the keel. <laughs> if you say so. Mind, you would also better pierce the sides of the barges and use oars as well. Yes, sir. 
Good. Well, we'll proceed at once. How long do you estimate, Mount? I'd say by tomorrow noon, sir. Yeah, tomorrow noon. Well, you disagree, Von Krasowitz, huh? Mr. Commodore Hornblower, I did not follow you and your cameras. Uh, I did not understand about them. But these past few minutes, I have been observing the activities of the enemy. Please, take this telescope and see for yourself. They are beginning to move up the big guns. What? By tomorrow at noon, it, well, it may be too late. So the art of war was not entirely imitative after all. Just as we had refused to accept the inevitable, exactly so had the French Marshal Medon tried to hasten his timetable. Work on the camels progressed with orderly, frantic speed. The barges were brought out from Riga, the harvey was lashed between them. Torches reddened the darkness as the men labored to quicken the task to be done. And by dawn, Lieutenant Mound was able to start toward the river. Like three giant water bugs fastened together, the barges and the bomb catch began to move. Side, oars! Side, pull harder! Mr. I know, sir. We're not deep enough in the water to get any bite against the current or the wind. The Danube rudder doesn't compensate? Even the rudder, sir. We need a stronger pull and we haven't got it. Well, you better drop anchor, Mr. Mann. But the French guns are moving up. It'll do us no good to go on like this. Our draft may be shallow, but we'll, we'll only pile up in shoal water. Pile up and sit there on the shoals, watching the French batteries pound our allies. There must be some solution. Well, let's hope we find it. Well, we must find it. Drop anchor, Mr. Mann. Aye, aye, sir. Drop! French guns were moving up into position to attack the Russian defenders outside Riga. And despite our bright promises, we seemed unable to give aid to our allies. We'd raised the Harvey by lashing her between two emptied barges, but the wind and current were proving too much for us to handle. It was an hour after dawn, and on the deck of the Harvey, the young face of Lieutenant Mound was gray with fatigue and helplessness. We've not much time left, sir, have we? Not much. Only the wind would change. If it would back around behind us instead of being off the starboard. Mm. Besides, the French guns will be in position by noon. Yes. If the wind shifted, we'd be in position, too, in shallow water right on Boney's flank. Thirteen-inch shells loaded with the explosive fired from that mortar. There must be some replacement for a rudder, sir. I trust there is. Heading for the church tower, I took with me a, a warm feeling for young Mound. And I also took a signalman, Summers, to rig a pole so that we could let the bomb catch know the effect of its mortar fire. Colonel von Klausowitz watched these operations with me. Halliards all rigged, sir. Signals ready for hoist. Very good, Summer. Stand by. Hi, sir. Colonel von Klausowitz, the French siege guns are in position. Come on, horn blow. Any moment they shall open fire. Where's this boat of yours, sir? It's moving upriver now, Colonel. Where? Oh, yes. It moves slowly. Well, it's an awkward craft. It moves as fast as it can. The French siege guns will be sheltered behind those breastworks. You see? They are piercing holes in the breastworks to allow the muscles to project. Yes, I can see. Our that. batteries are useless against breastworks. Uh, the Harvey carries a mortar. Huh? Oh, yes. I digest her, yes. You're very high. Once in position, the shells will drop down as if from the sky. I sincerely hope so. General Estnock will be here at any moment to observe personally. Good, good. As Governor General of Riga for Tsar Alexander, he will be very disappointed should your plan fail. I also shall be very disappointed. <laughs> Summers, there's the ready flag going up on the Harvey. Yes, sir. Acknowledge. Aye, aye, sir. Signal is thrown, sir. Stand by to observe mortar fire. Stand by, dear sir. Commodore Hornblower, your ditch is ready at last. What? Oh, oh yes, yes, General Esnoff, at last. I shall stand by your side. Please to describe to me. I will, sir. The mortar's being loaded. It's aimed by pointing the entire ship like an arrow at the target. Ah. Summers, make signal to Harvey. On target, fire at will. On target, fire at will. Aye, aye, sir. 
if one has been fired without delay, sir. Huh? Well, it's impossible from now on, General. That one caught the breastwork, sir. They've been doubled. A siege gun destroyed. Look, the muzzle is split wide open. Another gun destroyed. Sir, there's a French horse-drawn battery on the move. Where do you see that, Summers? Coming up from the rear, sir. Your thinking man's right, Commodore. They are heading to take up a position on that point of land below your bunker. Yes, they will bring their guns to bear very soon. Shall I signal we'll break off more action, sir? Yeah. A moment, if you please. Uh, Commodore Hornblower, we should be pleased if your mortar fire should continue as long as possible. It is doing much damage. Very well, very well, General. It shall be continued. Uh, uh, Summers, keep an eye on that horse-drawn battery. Aye, aye, sir. The catch is being fired upon now, sir. Yes, I can see that. French cannonball dropping all around it. So I observed, General. At last, Boyder raised a fountain of water very close. Yes, close enough. Summers, signal to the harbour. Discontinue the action. Aye, aye, sir. She's got it, sir. They've slipped the anchor and out with the oars. Get the sails up, man. Don't get your sails up. Oh, come, boy. Hurry, hurry. There go the sails, sir. She moves very slowly. She remains within range still. Yes, the wind would drop now. I think she has been hit. It is hard to tell. There is so much smoke. Yes. She's moving now, sir. Barges and all. Yes, not fast enough, Summers. Faster, man. Faster. She's reaching for deeper water now, sir. But she's still within range. The Frenchies are... Look, sir. They're not tied together any longer. Lieutenant Mound has cut the barges loose, Summers. Once out of shoal water, the Harvey can no move faster. Oh, notice the silence, gentlemen. The French battery has stopped firing. She's, she's out of range. Yes. A very close call, Commodore. Very close. But worth it, General Axmoff. Well worth it. Commodore Hornblower, thanks to you, I should estimate the progress of the siege has been delayed by... Um, I should estimate uh, by, by four days. Four days? I, I, I should estimate. Four days. Four days is excellent. It is by such little delays that a final victory will be won. and Bonaparte was marching into Russia and all we could accomplish at this outpost was four days delay. Uh, sir, Mr. Wilson is second in command on board the Harvey. With your permission, I shall signal him. Signal Wilson? Yes, sir. Man, uh, man was killed. Yes, sir. One of the last shots from the shore. I see. Bush, I... I, I delayed signaling to discontinue the action. I, I delayed till the last moment. I... He was a fine officer. Yes. If only I... Bush, he, he wrote his wife. Uh, if his child is a boy, she is to name him after me. If only I... If only I had not delayed. A fine officer, sir, was Mr. Mound. Yes. Sir... Shall I signal for Mr. Wilson? Mm. What's that? Uh, <clears throat> yes, Captain Bush. Signal Mr. Wilson, if you please. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.